I think men have often in the pursuit of greatness and, and civilization and forward motion had to alienate the part of themselves that's tender, that's kind, that's non-competitive. That's It's been about winning. But I think now we have a possibility in this day and age to see leaders who, from whatever gender, leaders who are able to access their emotional intelligence, leaders who are able to be empathetic to a broad range of ideas, able to be wise. You know, true wise leadership is inclusive, is collaborative. I feel in my bones that we have an enormous obligation and opportunity right now in this day and age to do whatever we can to ensure that this planet, this precious planet, is protected and the hope comes from being in a room and in a space with other people who have ideas and have the ability to tell the truth, see the problem as it actually is, not worse than and come up with ideas and action those ideas about what we can do as little human individuals to, you know, to make some difference, a tiny bit of difference, a tiny little bit of difference that creates a bigger difference. Number one, don't lose hope. Enjoy the company of these women. Soak that up because, you know, fill up your cup because from that full cup, your leadership will be wiser, will be kinder, will be, will be more sparky, more alive. Number two, stay in the room, be in the room with people who you agree with and go out in the world to be with people that you disagree with as well. Don't make silos of your ideas. You know, have the courage to, have the courage to have conversations that are challenging because when it comes to leadership, you have to have that ability to listen but also to hang on to your point of view. Number three, just keep backing yourself, counting yourself in. Keep counting yourself in. Don't discount your playfulness. Don't discount your curiosity. Don't discount the things that only you as a woman can do. Keep counting yourself in and having the courage to do things on behalf of a bigger picture.